Hi, today I'm going to show you how to use Azure Blob Storage to save your MP3 files or even MP4 if you're going to use video production software uh, to save your content and serve it over the internet. So in my particular case, I host a bi-weekly podcast called the Indie Dev Podcast uh, where I interview developers from around the world to help understand um, the trials and tribulations of what their process is like for creating some of these games. So an issue that I run into is I'm using Podomatic to serve this content, but it can only hold so much information at once before I need to upgrade to a premium tier. I'm still paying off many of my student loans, so therefore trying to save some funds here and there, and that's where Azure Blob Storage can come into play. So what happens was after several episodes, Podomatic has to delete the older ones to make room for the new ones. I can now use my Azure Blob Storage account to take my older MP3s and link them back to my website so that anyone coming by to view the site can click to download the mp3s from my blob storage account and then I have access to older episodes. So what is blob storage exactly? Well essentially it's uh, a container that can hold um, any sort of file if you will. So I can put uh, documents in there, I can put um, executables and serve that as a blob, a zip file, um, mp4s, images, it's really just a cost-effective way of serving content across the internet. So again, we're going to be covering exactly how I use this for my MP3s. If you want to see uh, the files we'll be talking about, you can go to the Indie Dev Podcast at indiedevpodcast.wordpress.com and see what we're looking at. But to get started, we need an Azure service or Azure Blob Storage account. So I'm going to log into the Azure portal, which you can see I'm at right now. And once I'm inside this Azure portal, uh, on the left hand side here we have uh, my storage container. So inside storage um, I can create uh, new, new blob storage containers to hold all this information. You see I have one already, it's called blob indie dev. So I'll click on that and you can see how I use it in my day-to-day -day workflow. So my dashboard I can see oh, it's not giving me any kind of monitoring here, I haven't set that up yet, but I can see containers. And Once I click on containers you see I have uh, a storage account with my podcast episode containers. I'll click on that. Now you can see on the left hand side I have the names of all the episodes of my podcast as well as a URL for where I can download them from. Uh, last time it was modified and the size of some of these episodes. So they range everything from 17 or 18 megabytes all the way up to uh, 53 or 82 for some of them. But with this URL right here I can copy it, open it up inside my browser, and as you see, it starts right away. So what it does is that URL points to that file in my blob storage account and I can start streaming it immediately. Not bad. So let's create one of our own. On the left hand side here I have storage and you see in the bottom of that I have a new button. Hit new and the option you quick create a new storage account appears. Now the URL is the web address that I'm going to use to access this blob storage account. So for this particular case I will call it um, blob storage, it's got to be lowercase, blob storage video. It's going to append .core, .windows, .net at the end. So now for the location and affinity group I want to do the location that is closest to me. I'm in Philadelphia, so I'm going to select East US. And then replication right here, what this is saying is how do I want this information copied across the servers? If I do locally redundant, that means it's going to um, copy my files multiple times in the same server location. Uh, at least three times for every container. If I go to something like geo redundant, what that does is it'll say um, rather than keep it in the same building, I'm going to move it to multiple data centers um, across that east region. So for example, if Godzilla ever came and attacked one of the data centers, I'm still backed up because all of my information is on uh, not only that data center, but two more in addition to that. So for right now, I'm going to keep costs down. I'm going to click locally redundant and then create storage account. Now you can see Azure's giving me a little update here in the bottom saying create storage account blob storage video. And in just a moment, it's going to be done. So what this is doing is uh, on a virtual machine somewhere, some space is being allocated uh, so that I can save all these uh, small files. So 
So it takes about uh, 30 seconds to one minute to get spun up. So once this is done, uh, I'll show you how we can um, actually create a new container. So right now this is just a new storage account, but we need to create a container inside of that account. I'll show you what that looks like right here. So you see we have our account which I just made. So my account was uh, test blob video. So that'd be my account right here. My container, I'm going to call this, um, we'll call this uh, audio files. So that's uh, exactly what it sounds, a container to hold all these. And then the blob itself is your images, your videos, your audio files that all get turned down into uh, binary data inside of this blob container. And here we go. Our blob storage video is ready to go. I'm going to click on that account. I'm going to go over containers. It's going to say I don't have one right now. So I do is create a new container. And we'll call this audio, oh, do lowercase, audio files. And now I have the opportunity to make it private, a public container, or a public blob. So by default, private uh, is going to be accessed only by the account owner. So that means only I can actually have access to uh, these MP3 files when you're putting in there. Um, if I make a public container, that means everything is open to everybody here. Um, if I want a public blob, that means on a case-by-case -case basis, I can make these individual files available to the public. But for simplicity's sake, I'm going to click on public container because I want to share all the files inside of here. Hit OK. It's going to create a container. And you can see we currently do not have anything in there. Let's hop over to Visual Studio, and I'll show you how we can actually access this container from Visual Studio to upload all these files. Before we can hop into Visual Studio, we've actually got to download and install it first, along with the Azure SDK. Fortunately, Visual Studio Community Edition 2013 is free. It's essentially Visual Studio 2013 professional, but now given out to the community to free to help you get started with your projects. So you can download it for free at visualstudio.com. And after you've downloaded it, you're going to need the Azure SDK to actually connect to Azure and make changes to your account. So from the azure.microsoft.com site up here, you can uh, use your favorite search engine, look for the Azure SDK, scroll down, and it looks like there are quite a few here. Don't be overwhelmed, because actually what we're looking for is, I know that we have Visual Studio 2013, so I need the SDK for Visual Studio 2013. Download this one right here. And once you have the Azure tools installed, you can open up Visual Studio, which I have here. On the left-hand side, you see we have our Server Explorer. This is what allows us to connect to Azure and make changes to our account. I'm going to open this up, and it should ask me to log in. So I see all the items that are available for me to play with through the SDK. What I'm looking for right now is storage. Remember, because we have a blob storage account. And here we go, it's going to ask me to log in. So in this particular case, I need to log in with my account. And just a moment, we're going to see, oops, I guess did not like that. We're going to see it open up all the storage containers we have. And there we go. So on this right hand side, you see I now have my um, blob indie dev storage, which is where I keep all of my MP3s for my podcast, but I also have blob storage video. That's the one we just created before. I can open that up. You can see we have blobs, queues, and tables. Right now we're playing with blobs, so let's open this up again. And we have nothing in there just yet. We just have that audio files container that we had built. So inside of audio files though, we want to actually add new audio to upload. So I'll double click on audio files and you see it says container contains no blobs. Start using the container by selecting the upload blob button. The upload blob button is right here. It's this arrow that's pointing uh, to a horizontal plane. Click on this and it's saying file name. So give me a file that I want to upload. So we'll look and now I have a bunch of music here, so I say VRC6 soundtracks. Let's down. Let's uh, put up the soundtrack for Salamander. Push that, 
And I can put it in a folder if I want to further organize some of my content, but in this case, I'm not looking to organize it. I just want to get it up there. Hit OK. And on the bottom here, you can see it's uploading the file, currently 0%, now 11. So it should take a few moments, 22%. And in just a minute, we'll see it appear on the top of the screen here. Sixty-seven percent. So it actually uploads very fast. And there we go. If I zoom in a bit, you can see I have my salamander.mp3. Oh, no, nearly twenty-five megabytes. It is of type audio MPEG. And here is the link to get to this MP3. So it's name my blob storage account, or yeah, along with the container I'm keeping it in and the name of the track. So I'm going to click on this. I can right-click and copy URL. Now, inside of my browser, I can paste that URL. Let's see. It just starts playing. And it's that easy to upload and share your content. So to prove that I actually have it there, let's go back to our blob storage account. And here we go. Audio files is the container I kept it in. It's going to load any updates, and there we go. There's Salamander. You see um, the URL. I can copy that again, put it in my video player or audio player, and I am good to go. So it makes it very easy to share uh, podcasts, music, videos. And again, I'll find you, finally show you how I use it in my own work. I'll go to indiedevpodcast.wordpress.com. And here's the latest episode with Michael Hicks go down a little bit and I have download the mp3 and look at where it's pointing to it is pointing towards um, the mp3 that's located at my indie blo uh, my blob storage account I can click on it and it can open up inside of my browser or I can right click and save audio as and now I can take that audio and save it locally on my machine so that's all it is to uh, to use Azure Blob Storage. Again, it's a very, very cost-effective way of um, saving and sharing content across the web. You can use it for videos, files, folders, documents, but in my case, I'm using it for audio and MP3 to save some costs. If you're inter interested in it, feel free to reach out to me, dvoils at microsoft.com, and I'd be more than happy to save with the BizSpark account to uh, give it a try yourself. Thanks.